Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're taking a look at a German artillery Luger, but more specifically the snail drum that was used with it. These were developed in about 1916, and they are a 32 round magazine designed to give a little more firepower to uh, the sort of guy who might be armed with a long barreled Luger. So these were also used in the first uh, iteration of the MP18 submachine gun. Now it's interesting to note, after each shot here, you'll see the little lever on that drum move a position. That is because this type of drum actually has two different feed springs in it. Let's go ahead and speed up the action here. You'll see that lever move again, and now pretty soon it's going to stop. I think that was the last round where the lever is going to move. Yep, there we go, it's all done. Now the reason for this is that there are actually two main springs inside this magazine. One is a flat clock type spring wound up inside the base of the drum, and that provides the force for about the first half of the cartridges in the drum. And then there is also a typical box magazine style coil spring inside the stick of the magazine that goes up inside the grip frame. So what'll happen is when you load the gun up, you're compressing both springs, and for about the first half of the magazine, the, the, the clock spring in the drum unwinds and it's exerting force pushing the cartridges up. But once you get about halfway through the magazine, that spring is completely unwound and it's well, not loose, but close to it. At that point, the coil spring in the box portion of the magazine takes over and it continues to push cartridges up. So this is part of the reason why it requires a special tool to load these magazines. It takes quite a lot of force. Um, you can hand load not very many in before it gets too tight to do. You need the, the special tool. That's why it's a very interesting early style of drum. Uh, they're a little bit finicky, but once you get them worked out, they actually run pretty well, as you can see here. Of course, they were good enough historically to be used in submachine guns, and that takes a, a pretty decent magazine to do. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Tune in again to ForgottenWeapons.com.